Hey, what's up guys? It's Jamie. It is uh, Sunday, February 19th, I believe. Now, I had to work today because in the auto business, this is the President's Day weekend, which is a big, big deal in the auto industry, generally. Not like it used to be, in my opinion, but, but uh, we're still carrying on that tradition. So, um, I figured I would talk about Tesla and a lesson I learned about holding, you know, through volatility um, and the, the, you know, the pros and the cons that I've experienced over this past six months that I'm going to share with you. Um, and this is going to maybe hit home with some people that stumble across here. Versus if you're one of my kids that look at this later and say, what was he trying, what was he talking about, what was dad talking about? Um, <clears throat> the market is closed tomorrow for the holiday, so I really won't see the next step until, um, of, of what's going to happen until one, uh, Tuesday. So, I had purchased 300 shares of Tesla, and my average cost, I want to say, I had gotten it down to 139 share okay and um, what happened was that I started at 236 that's where my average cost was starting so I got it down almost well actually over a hundred dollars a share um, as I kept adding shares on the way down and I added all the way down to up you know in the, in the low hundreds between 100 and 110 now in that account which was I was using the Robinhood account because I trade options and shares in Robinhood and uh, and some in Weeble and TD Ameritrade and Thinkorswim. But I have fun personally with, with Robinhood. And the Robinhood challenge that I did last year for myself, I, you know, other guys do it, uh, it seems, is I was like, hey, let me take five grand and turn it into a hundred grand. Let me show you how I did it. Because uh, I've never let it go that high. I always take the money out. <clears throat> so it didn't go as planned. <laughs> But by the end of the year, I had gotten up to about 28 grand, and then uh, I took a, a huge hit. Right, 28. Yeah, 28 grand. I lost about 18 grand in value because Tesla was just on a steady downtrend. Right, and if I have time, I'll throw the chart up in there. But um, that was right about the time that Elon bought Twitter, and he was making a lot of statements on there that were hurting the company and and a combination of a lot of other stuff um, uh, inventories and plants shutting down and uh, you know all kinds of weird stuff going on but, but but the big thing I think was the Twitter stuff right and there was a time I think his name is Gordon Johnson I think that's his name that guy uh, was I remember him doing he was on CNBC doing one of those stock reports and the stock was it was just in the low low hundreds and everyone was like this thing is going to break 100 and it's going to go how low right like he was saying 25 to 30 bucks right that's his prediction other guys were saying 60 to 80 and some of the guys i follow the other influencers i think that are beyond me like that are better than me that are more professional those guys were saying 60 to 80 as well well against my better judgment and because I was using margin and I didn't want to add money, I said, okay, I'm going to have to liquidate some of these shares um, because if it goes lower, right, if it does go below 100, it gets to 80, 60, let alone 25, right, I'm going to get liquidated anyway, or I'm going to have to add money. And if I want to buy more shares to bring my cost average on, which I do, and this again is my trading account. If you're a long-term investor, which is the Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger approach, this would all be irrelevant. But in the trading stuff, I'm trying to make profits, and I, I couldn't make profits other than the calls that I kept buying back cheaper, which was giving me some cash. Um, but the value of my shares that I was buying just kept dropping. If I buy it, at, if I bought it at 220 and it dropped to 200, and I bought more, it went to 180. If it went to 180, I bought more shares, it dropped to 160 and so on and so forth, all the way to 100. So I was like, all right, well maybe I'll just get out and then I'll wait and see what happens. 
If I was not using margin, it really wouldn't matter. Because when you use margin, you're forced, you're forced to act in one regard or another. If you're if, mar if you get a margin call, you're gonna add money or, or sell more shares. Or I guess you could sell the shares like a covered call farther out, collect a bigger premium. But um, I had to make a decision. Do I want to add more money or do I want to liquidate some of the shares? My thought was for me, if I liquidate some of the shares, I free up some cash, and even though I'm gonna take a hit, I can get some tax benefits from that and I can buy it lower. So I only maintain about 100 shares, to, to make a long story short, and the, the, the loss that shown was $18,000. Like, like real money, 18,000. So for some people that's nothing, for other, it's laughable, for other people that'd be like, oh, that's substantial. But you know, for me, that's like, it, it, it's painful. It's like, oh man, that sucks. But I got about 10 of it back so far on um, holding those 100 shares. Now, I would have, and I've been through this before, where like, if I would have just held the shares, then I would have got all my money back, value-wise, for those shares. And I would have went from, you know, I was at 220 originally, but you gotta understand I was averaging down along the way, and I would have made a profit. I don't know how much exactly, because I kept buying all the way down. And this is not about the cash that was available to buy more shares, this is about what my average was profits and losses per share so we can't predict the market we don't know for sure like what it was going to be like i i did not know that tesla would not go down under 100 my sentiment the probabilities were like it's probably going to go under 100 it really seems like it and i let people get in my head meaning all the stuff i was reading and watching and i was like man i hate to, i hate to let this keep sliding. It's just been going since 220, 230, all the way down to 100. I mean, it just really seems like it's going to get into the hundreds, like under 100, or not thought. So it's going to get into the 60 to 80 seems very possible from, from where it's been. You know, and it still could go there. But if you're an investor, all they are is buying opportunities. You hear that. Whatever the share price is of any company, if you believe in the company like Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, for example, that say, I don't care what the share price is, I believe in the company, whatever the company might be, say like Coca-Cola or for them Apple, these are products and services that I use and they just keep adding and they don't care about that. And they're holding for decades. Now, you're a big winner if you started adding in the low hundreds to your shares and they've gone back to two away 220 I think or no, around 210 give or take right give or take a few dollars and it's it's probably likely that it will get up to 220 and, and maybe over the coming months actually hit in the 230 to 250 range right and then there'll be a big test on that uh, top of the channel for the big downtrend and if it breaks that that's a pretty good bullish signal I think that it will maybe continue you know on from there if not then it's going to retest some of those lower um, you know those lower levels again I don't know how low but but you're, you're sitting around waiting you are you could be sitting around waiting saying like oh it's gonna come back it's it's gonna get back to 100 it's gonna get back it's gonna go to the 70 or 60 I don't want to miss that and you, you sell your shares of a company that you believe in and then you miss all the upside and the only reason you should really be doing that is if you're if you have money that you don't you can't afford to lose, you're in a margin account that you you risk getting liquidated or forced to act anyway, um, <clears throat> or um, let me see. So you know you're in a margin account, uh, or or you're willing to add the cash. Where you say I don't care if it if it drops to twenty five dollars, I'll just. I'll just add, I'm not in a margin position, I'll just add more money. Or even if you are, you're just like, I'll add another 5,000, 10,000, whatever you, whatever's available to you 
depending on the company and the share price, you're like, I'm in a position where I can keep adding and it doesn't matter. I mean, I think that's where you're able to do the margin stuff. And, and I don't I don't recommend margin stuff, you know, for, for, for I mean, not that it matters what I say, but I mean, it seems like margin can really work to your advantage if you know what you're doing. If, if you understand the risk, it's like jumping out of an airplane and having a parachute. You're like, hey, if this thing opens, I'm in good shape. <clears throat> I'm gonna have a lot of fun on the way down. But if I don't know how to pack a parachute, I don't know if I want to take that risk of jumping out 10,000 feet, you know, or whatever, you know, 10 miles up in the sky. Um, you know, that's that stuff that uh, that you, you got to be experienced and, and be in a position where you can do that. So I think that for the rest of the year, what I'm probably going to do, this is just me talking out loud, is I'm going to watch these levels to see if it gets into the 220 and up, you know, 220, 250. I'm going to be sad if I can in my trading account add more shares, you know, like sell. I mean, that, that's the whole purpose of when you're a trader, whether you're a day trader, which I am not, or a swing trader, which I do, I do do that. If you're not just investing where you say, I have this long-term account, whatever that looks like for you, and I'm just going to add whether it's 250 or 100 or $25, I will continue to add a, a, a portion of my money, available money, into that account forever, right? For as long as I can. And at some point, whether I die and then set up to go to somebody else, or at some point I want to live off that money or sell some of it or borrow against it, whatever you're going to do 10, 20, 30 years from now, I mean, uh, I mean, maybe the share price of Tesla, for example, does go to a thousand. 1500 2000 I mean, it could, it very well could in the next 5, 10, 20 years could, uh, if they keep growing and doing all these other things, it certainly could, right? But there's so many other things that you can invest in. There's so many other things that you can do. One of the things I've really been focusing on this past couple months and you haven't, I've been, I haven't been posting as, as, as much because I'm not trading as much uh, and you know, other than post a couple life lesson inputs or, you know, opinionated. Um, the real estate stuff has been really interesting for me, which I, I you know, I've already met 12 minutes. I don't want to talk too, too long. Um, but I've had a couple opportunities come across my desk, so to speak, for some properties in Boston. And, and you know, one of which is a potential creative finance deal, which depending if they accept our letter of intent, which we, we, we didn't even think we were gonna get this far. Um, we'll, 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 I mean, I'll, I'll talk more about it. I know I posted the video where I did some, a walkthrough of the property and I was showing you like some basics of what it looked like inside the house. It's a split level house, <clears throat> fantastic location in my opinion and, and affordable. Uh, with a lot of upside and the rent potential is great. Like there's so many upsides to it that I look at that kind of stuff and I think, you know, I could buy that property and it's almost guaranteed that if I buy it, the probabilities of a win are, are, are drastically better than me buying some shares of a company that's gonna be very volatile. I don't, I'm not sure where, what direction it's gonna go in over the coming months. Right, uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen, so my money's volatile. If I buy a property in Boston, people want to live there. The rents are high, and they're probably not going down. There's a lot of upside to this to these properties uh, in this area because because oh, I got to go in here. Um, if you buy this property in Boston, the the property is going to continue to go up. Uh, and regardless of what the debt is, I, I, I will talk about this, I'll end the video at this. One of the properties of two that I'm trying to get is a, a property that long-term, I could develop into condominiums if I wanted to, right? Like worst case scenario, I could turn it into a, a, a three to six unit uh, condo easily, right? And and just forget about the other things that might happen. Just on that one property, for sure, I could build a three to six unit um, apartment complex, right? A condominium, condom, condominium plex. And I would get probably 
2,500 to 3,500 easy per unit and they would rent out. So that's almost a guarantee. Like it's 95% because that's what's going on around there. They just built a major hotel. Uh, there's, uh, it's, it's, it's five minutes, six minutes from the airport, Logan airport. Uh, there's just so many things why that is a hot, hot market. Why I really want to get this deal. And I'm overpaying probably by about a hundred thousand dollars to get this property. You're like, what? A hundred thousand. Yes. A hundred thousand because five, 10 years from now, that hundred thousand is going to be like nothing. Right. Because I don't care if I overpay, because if you buy something and you're getting an 8%, 9% rate, how much money are you paying in interest on a $500,000 or $1 million property? A, a lot. <laughs> and I, my proposal on this property was owner financed. And the owner finance deal is for you know a 30 year amortization on a five year balloon payment. And um, you know I, I, I couldn't, I wasn't able to do 0%, but I, I, I asked for one. And because I'm overpaying so much and there's no broker. So they don't have to pay 40, 50 grand to a broker and they're getting a premium price for their property with it's not worth what they're selling it for. And I have to put a lot of money into the property to make it livable or rentable. You know, and the down what is the downside? They get some cash up front, they get a premium price, they don't have to pay a broker. And if I default, um, they keep the money and that whatever work I put into the property. And and, and people want the property at any time. I think the only problem that the, the pain point for this seller was they wanted some money to take care of some other things. And, you know, maybe that'll come up in the, in the negotiation, like in the, you know, in the, in the next step of what I'm talking, uh, like if they counter, they might say, well, here we want this and that, but we'll see. We'll see. The deal has got to be right. I mean, that's one thing I could tell you, like, and that's one thing I've heard over and over again. Like if a deal is not right for you, like it's like, it's got to make sense. Like I'm willing to pay this much, I can afford that much, I know I can put this much money into it, but hey, it's gotta be a, sort of a win for both parties where they feel like I'm not getting gouged. And and you know, and sometimes people do take advantage, you know, uh, they do take advantage of other people. So uh, I, I think that for me long-term, that payout would be far exceed my Tesla shares, right? Because that's a legacy property that I can hand down to my kids that will cash flow every month and the debt will come down and the property will appreciate and I can increase the rents, I can pull money out. That's why to me, real estate is, is more of a focus than just trading shares of uh, stocks. And I love doing that stuff, I love it. So anyway, that's what I got going on today. That's, that's what I wanna talk about because I haven't done that much this month. Um, I wanted to share what was going on. I hope everybody had a nice Valentine's Day and uh, and a nice President's Day tomorrow. So I'll uh, see you guys next video.